Hello everyone and welcome back to Tea Chats. This is the first episode that's ever been on time. I'm your host, Alexander Poselski. I have a cup of tea with me. I suggest you pause the video, brew your own, and sip it with me while we chat. Well, since it's Halloween this Friday, I'm going to shoehorn in as many spooky jokes as I can today. So, everybody hold on to your knickers and tighten your rectum because you're about to be scared shitless. This is the moment your sphincter has been preparing for your whole life. <laughs> anyway, since this is the Halloween episode, we're gonna have a special guest host today. So everybody, meet Don Quixote. It's Coyote, damn it. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Donathan. I I'm a slam poet. Uh, I go by a street name of Don Coyote. Like, uh, get it? Um, I've, I've won Poet of the Night two, two nights, uh, in a row at the, uh, at the Coffee Grind open mic night. Uh, gr granted it was, it was the first two open mic nights and I was, I was the only poet there, but, um, I mean, my mom was there and she, she liked it. So I guess it's like about, I mean, if you really think about it, it's like quality over quant. It's Halloween season. Uh, what are you going for Halloween? I'm I'm going as uh, Christopher Walken, uh, who is my spirit animal, and I, I've written a poem uh, to to celebrate the the season, <laughs> and I'm gonna read it in my Christopher Walken voice. So uh, it's called Halloweeners. Halloweeners, I hope you don't think me rude for vituperations against that ill-begotten brood. But Halloweeners have got me in a vendetta kind of mood. Let me explain. Let me delineate the reasons. Halloween is my favorite of all seasons. Blessed Sahuin! I decorate the house, put spiders in the kitchen, Carve a jack-o'-lantern glowing like a jolly son of a bitchin'. Their front porch display with a smile of beaming like an acetylene torch that'll scorch all the ghouls and ghosties in the night. Then I step right back inside and close the door. Thunk! I step back to the porch, now coated in jack -o chunks Oh, the humanity! I thunder, then step back outside. This is my blunder. For what should make my harried head ring but thwap, 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 thwap. Eggs. Five of them. A dripping pentagram of hateful yunk. I leave the slate and hurry behind the door. It goes quiet at first, but then thwap, thwap, thwap. Go away. I don't want any. Thwap, thwap, thwap. I'm not going anywhere. Thwap, thwap. Open up. I have a chicken. Thwap. I ain't opening nothing. Then nothing. It all goes quiet. The nice smell. Smoke. And where there's smoke, there's a bag of flame. This won't do. I raise my shoe. And then the cruel cosmic irony. A blizzard of TP comes raining down on me. And I can't seem to see. That was last year. So now tis the season for buckets of candy. My neighbors give out, that's fine and dandy. But when the trick-or-treaters come round like some thrift store costume shop rejects, they'll find the trick is the treats all mine. For I'm in my camo, and I'm in my bushes, and I'm with my garden hose, and I pick them off with that super soak, like paparazzi off a rose, and let hypothermia take care of the rest. And when the night's done, I warm myself from the chill with the Halloween vision that does my heart feel Halloween us 
all the glow, all the crisp on Satan's grill. Blessed Saw win. Thank you. Well, thanks, Don. That was nice. Uh, last episode, Matt Stefan dropped in their opinion on ISIS, saying that they shouldn't really have Islamic in the name of the organization at all, which stands for Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Um, I agree. In the case of any radical group, we should keep in mind that these groups don't really represent the whole at all. Um, the, I the ideology of ISIS doesn't match the average Muslim's interpretation of the Quran, and Matt actually pointed out that uh, more than 120 highly regarded Muslim scholars actually wrote a letter um, picking apart the ISIS ideology piece by piece using quotes from the Quran. And you can bet Don Coyote's blooming slam poetry career that they did a damn fine job of it. Um, you can find the letter online, read it, sign and endorse it. Um, I've included the link in the description and I highly recommend checking it out. I've signed it and I think everybody should, frankly. Zhao Galu kindly reminded me of my crippling lack of caterpillar left. In order to hold him over while I wait for it to grow back, I'll wear a snake on my lip instead. This, this works, right, Zal? Right? Oh god. What have I become? I'm becoming a sham of my former self! Come back, Caterpillar! Come back! <laughs> Paul the Video Game Nerd brought up an issue that he's been thinking about recently. Uh, the struggle between the black community and the white majority police force. He said that the mistreatment of a black individual sparking the Baltimore riots gave major publicity to the event. And um, he thinks that one of the big contributors to the problem is the media, which only reports news stories guaranteed to spark controversy. These, these black versus white stories that um, make us think the American police force is out for blood. This bias in the media is causing innocent white cops and innocent black civilians to attack each other. There is a relatively large disparity between the amount of black and white deaths by the hands of police officers. And although this does show that black citizens are unfairly treated in such situations, media coverage of these events is still incredibly biased. White, the death of white people by the hands of cops is scarcely reported, no matter how unjust that death is. So, how do we solve the problems of racism still inherent in American society today? Well, I can tell you that the answer is definitely not through violent protest. Violent protest only serves to further the bias of the police, um, reaffirm the media statements, and cause more discrimination. All you do by protesting violently is conform to a false stereotype and, and you know, strengthen the us versus them mentality. It's, it's been 50 years since the civil rights movement uh, in the 60s and it's apparent that racism is still a problem that's plaguing us to this day, but you can't solve it over a night of violent, fiery protest. That's all for today's show, folks. Uh, remember that T-Chats is a conversation between you and I, so why don't you take a dive into the comment section below and leave a comment continuing that conversation. Uh, what are your thoughts on police brutality? How do, you, how do you fix this problem? If you have anything that you'd like to discuss, go ahead and bring it to the table. Um, if you fancy the idea of chatting with me over a cup of tea, every other week, then subscribe. And I'll see you next Monday after the Monday. <sighs> I'm disappointed in you guys. Um, last episode, I asked you for jokes about Justin Bieber, one of the juiciest media's topics out there, and I get nothing. Nothing. You guys are, you're better than this. There will be no reading of Justin Bieber jokes today because there weren't any. That's alright though, I'm not sad. 
Have a great Halloween. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, there was a beautiful slam poem in today's episode, and it was written by a published poet by the name of Matt Stefan. And um, you can click somewhere on this video right now to go to his channel and watch more videos and thank him for being a part of today's tea chat. Uh, I have also included a link in the description and it's good stuff. Go check him out. Thank you guys so much.